Shalom to the Most High's elect. Kohalohim la Yahweh Bahashem. Yahweh Shai Bahashem. Brekha Kodash. Shalom to the hopeful elect of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. And um, this is something I've really been thinking about. I've really been thinking about this thing that has been going on. Yeah, and. This is what came into my mind. A lot of people like to say the Lord did it with negativity, but they don't like to say the Lord did it with positivity. Every anytime something negative happens, people always one thing I've noticed in this thing is that anytime something negative happens, people will always say the Lord did it. But I've never actually seen someone say, the Lord did it when something positive happens. It's like, a, it's like a cycle that keeps on going round and round. Where people just, anytime something negative occurs, they will always say, the Lord did it, the Lord did it. But when something positive occurs, they will never say, the Lord did it. You know? And that's the mindset of a cult, man. Now let me get... Um, Isaiah chapter 14 starting at verse uh, is it 45 is it 45 okay Isaiah 45 and verse 7 says I form the light and create darkness notice how the Lord said light first and then he said darkness. And you see, Satan, Satan doesn't want this word to come out. You see what I'm saying? So Satan is fighting to make sure that this message doesn't come out because it, how coincidental is this happening? You know, it says, I make peace and create evil. Notice how the Lord said peace first and then he said evil. It says, I, the Lord, do all these things. Can you see? Can you see? This never happens, you know. But when I'm reading the Bible, this is when it happens. So that shows you that Satan does, it has, doesn't want this truth to come out. But I'm going to carry on, you know, this message through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh. Okay. So let me read that again. Isaiah 45, it says, I form the light and create darkness. All right. So the Lord creates the light. All right. And uh, what's it called? creates darkness so it's good and evil not just you know evil but good and evil you know he has holy angels and he has demons it's like it's a balance you know don't just be you know biased and just only choose evil like even in fact not only just that like how wish i even said some of you are not going to be martyrs some of you are not going to die so not every single person in this ministry is going to die. Some brothers that believe in Yahweh Bashim Shai are not going to get their uh, heads cut off. They're not going to be guillotined. That's what this Bible says. So, anyways, um, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is a beautiful one. Isaiah 45 and 9 says, Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. Yeah, and you know, how are you how how do people strive with their maker? They strive with their maker, right? By basically going against the word of the Lord. Because he said he creates good and he creates evil. You know? So why can't people be happy when, you know, let's say a brother, you know, heals from, uh, you know, like a maybe a thing that he's going through, a health issue and recovered. Why can't people say the Lord did that? Or, for instance, someone escaped a car accident. The Lord did that. Why is it always the negative aspects? People always like to say the Lord did it. All right. Let the potsherds strive, and with the potsherds of the earth, shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, What makest thou of thy work? He have no hands. It says, Woe unto him that saith unto his father, What begettest thou? Or to the woman, what hast thou brought forth? You see, you have to be respectable with parents as well. Like, just because you're in the ministry, 
you know, and you believe in how it's right. That doesn't mean that you're going to now be disrespectful to your your blood family, you know, like your biological mum and, and dad. You don't have to be rude to them because you believe in your Hawashai. Was your Hawashai disrespectful to his, uh, to Mary or Joseph? No. So you don't have to can hold that, that angry spirit of being angry with your biological family. Like, a, you know, a lot of things that are being taught are there to catch men and to deceive people. You know, let me get this one. Let me get this out real quick. Yeah, Jeremiah five and twenty six is for among my people are found wicked men. They they wait as they set of snares. They set a trap that they they catch men. All right, and how do they catch men? They catch men by telling you, "Oh, um, you're gonna be destroyed if you don't follow, you know, what we do. You're gonna die. You know, you're gonna be destroyed." But what did Yahweh Shai tell John? He said that um, no one that is, you know, doing good, roughly paraphrasing, you know, is with me. He can't be against us. He's on our part. You know? And you're going to have elect that are not part of famous camps. You know? You, that, that's why when you read the Bible, the Lord said he's going to gather his elect from Cush, from Petra, from Elam, from Sinai, all these different places. And I don't know any famous camp in India or in China or Ethiopia, any of these places. I just said, for among my people are found wicked men. Wicked men. Wicked men that, oh, that they, they just want to condemn you. They want to say that you, they have pleasure in you being destroyed. They don't genuinely want to see you make it into the kingdom. They do, they, their whole mind frame is fixated on someone being destroyed. Right, what does the scripture say? We know exactly that the adversary, you know, is, is making noise in the background. But I'm going to carry on going. So this is Luke 15 and 10. It says, Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of Yahweh over one sinner that repenteth. So when one person repents, one person, just one sinner, you have a bunch of holy angels that are just happy. They're just happy. They're glad. You know, the angels are so happy when one person repents and comes back to Yahweh Shai. But you got man, man, you know, that wants to see people condemned. Oh, you're going to take the vaccine. Then you'll take the mark of the beast and be destroyed. Oh, he's going to read Revelation 13 and 16 and say, Why are you so fixated in, you know, what did Angel Uriel say? Angel Uriel said, don't focus on how the ungodly will be punished, but focus on how the godly will be saved. You know, what's the point of focusing on people being destroyed? What is the point of focusing on people dying when, you know, the kingdom of heaven is at hand? Something more important. The bigger picture, when Yahweh Shai resurrected, he never spoke about Judas Iscariot once. He he moved on and he carried on doing what he has to do. And keep in mind, Yahweh Shai hasn't even killed one person. But yet again, men want to kill their brethren. Well, I don't know if they consider me to be a brother. But men want to kill Israelites. But the son of man which is sitting on the right hand of the Heavenly Father, hasn't even killed one Israelite. In, in the whole, in this Bible that I read, there is no document of Yahweh Shai even killing one Israelite. 
Not even one Israelite. Now, obviously, when he returns, he's going to be killing, you know, people. But I'm saying that as of the time of him being on earth, Yahweh I didn't even kill one Israelite. And when it says austere man, people are saying, oh, Yahweh is an austere man. No, 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 no. They were the ones calling him an austere man. He never called himself an austere man. Let me see if I can find that. And I'm not going to read the whole Bible verse because, you know, time. But Matthew chapter 25 verse 24 says, Then he which had received that one talent came and said, So hang on a second. This person said something. Said, said Lord, I knew thee, thee meaning you, that you are an hard man. Hang on a second. Let's pause right there. This person said that Yahweh Shai was a hard man. Yahweh Shai never called himself a hard man. This person opened his mouth and said that he's a hard man. Reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. It says, And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. You see, so... The point that I'm trying to make is that, you know, he lay, he stereotyped Yahweh Shai as an austere man. Which is not true. Yahweh Shai is not an austere man. Because the disciple, one of the disciples of Yahweh Shai rested on Yahweh Shai's chest. And even when you read the history of Yahweh Shai, a, a, a baby, a child walked up to Yahweh Shai. And the disciples were like, nah, take this baby away from him. But he was like, no, you know. Whoever humbles himself, like this little baby, this child here, is going to be called greatest in the kingdom. So, at the end of the day, we have to, you know, change in our ways. And, you know, people are condemning people and telling people they're going to be destroyed. But, do you know, have you even created a spirit? Do you know the time and effort it takes to create even one person? So you got to just look in the mirror and change your ways, man. That's why Yahweh Shai said, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did I not prophesy, you know, preaching week in, week out? Did I not cast out devils, rebuking all these uh, scoffers and scorners, all right? Uh, 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 um, doing many marvelous works and all this stuff. Yahweh Shai is going to tell them, depart from me. I don't know who you are. I don't know you. Why is he going to say that? Because... You know, we are unprofitable servants. Our righteousness is like a filthy rag. Like a filthy rag. How can you be proud with a filthy rag? How can you be confident in, 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 in a filthy rag, holding a filthy rag? That's why Shai said, brotherly love fulfills the whole law. But anyways, people think that they're the guys and... You know, their famous camp is going to get them salvation. But for those who are humble and actually do want to serve Yahweh Shai, you know, now it's time to really repent and get yourself right, man. Because we need to change, man. We need to change. We need to change our ways. Because the way we are behaving is like animals. And, um, and no, I'm not, I wouldn't even say animals because at least animals... You know, some animals actually care for themselves. You know, some animals actually care for themselves. And before I even close out, I want to even meditate on the mark of the beast. I want to meditate on the mark of the beast. Because a lot of people say stuff like, oh, if you take a RFID chip, you will be destroyed. Which I agree that if you take the mark of the beast, the RFID chip, you will be destroyed. I believe that. But I want to get something out real quick. Mm -hmm. Let me see this. So what I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to find...
Revelation chapter 22 verse 14 says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have rights to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Verse 15, For without are dogs. Now hang on a second. Question mark. It says, For without the commandments what are dogs. And a dog, whether it be a Rottweiler, a German Shepherd, a pit bull, uh, uh, you know, XL bully, whatever it is, a dog is classified as a beast. It says, and sorcerers, those that practice Wicca, witchcraft, all these things, and whoremongers, people that, you know, um, pimp out women and make them prostitutes, and murderers, people that kill idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, you know, natural born liars. But the point is, is that a dog is a beast, man. And you have people that are mocked, you know, for behaving like beasts. So, because they have that mark of, 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 of behaving like a beast, like a dog. And when you read Revelation, um, when you read Revelation, right, chapter, uh, I believe it's 21 and verse, uh, let me see if I can find it. I believe it's Revelation, uh, So, yeah, so my point is this, yeah, is that, you know, I'm going to read Revelation 21 and 8, and then I'm going to explain. It says, but the fearful, mocked, and unbelieving, and abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So if you behave like a dog, if you behave into witchcraft, unbelieving, abominable, murdering, whoremongers, all these characteristics, someone who has taken a microchip in their head or in their hand, you know, and someone who has these characteristics is still facing the same judgment as someone who hasn't been chipped. You're going to have people that are not going to be microchipped. They might not take a RFID chip. They might not take a chip in their head or in their hand, but they're still going to have the same exact pain as a person that took the chip. And, you know, we just read in the Bible that says, you know, without the uh, uh, commandments, you're like unto a dog, you know, and a dog is a beast. So you still have that mark of behaving, you know, and that you behaving like a dog gets you marked. So you're mocked like a beast man you know because your character is is behaving uncivilized because you don't want to listen to the commandments of you how about shimia shai so yes i know that there's a chip and there's a brain chip but also focus on personality and character as well because that's very important man but anyways i just want to close out on that